yo what's up welcome to my channel once again today i'll be checking out this video of uh, paul kagame the president of rwanda answering some questions from some journalists let's take a look very much my name is Ansoy from the bbc i have a quick question uh, for president kagame um, as chair of the Commonwealth, um, I wonder what your priority will be, uh, especially in terms of upholding the values of democracy and human rights, given that there's been a lot of scrutiny on your country and the record of your government, and uh, critics have been pointing out the number of opposition leaders and journalists who are in prison. Now, let me start with the, the issue of values. Who defines the values? Who doesn't actually have values? When people talk about values sometimes, there's one part of the world that has assumed the sole responsibility and the monopoly of defining values. So the rest of us have no values We've just to keep learning from these ones who define the mm -hmm. values. And, and by the way, the danger also is, it doesn't matter how you, long you take learning, <laughs> you will never qualify. Yeah, that, that, just, that, that's actually a very good point. Uh, that uh, it doesn't matter if we keep trying to to achieve the standards that these Western nations want us to achieve, but uh, it's also as if we are, we we are never good enough. We, it's as if we are not even making any progress because uh, any time we make a uh, little progress, it's as if now the goal has shifted. It's as if uh, we need to do, to do more than that. So it seems we will never be able to achieve it. So uh, I think he's actually making a, a very sensible point always be branded somebody who has no values or who comes from a place where there are no values. So I want to put this case clear. Those from the north who always assume where BBC comes from, who always think they are the face of values, the rest how to follow. It's a big mistake. It's not true. We have values too. We here in Rwanda, in Africa, we do. Yeah, no yeah. That, that, that's actually something else that uh, maybe people from the West think that people in Africa are not wishing to have any, any kind of good life or they don't, they are not, they don't have any goals to achieve in terms of uh, bettering their lives or improving themselves they just think uh, we have some kind of weird uh, values that, that maybe we are maybe it's in us not to be good as if we are that is what we are with that and that's what we uh, if we, if it were not for them to guide us that would be just be savages who are not <laughs> good at anything even uh, to our we would be a detriment even to ourselves so uh, uh, one thing that I like about Kagame is that uh, uh, he just makes a point that you can, uh, when you think about it, you, you'll see it's true, there's uh, a lot of truth in it. So let's keep listening. Those from the North who define or want to define the values have been part and parcel of these problems we have been facing. Some of them have actually been the cause of the problems we face. But at the same time, like, like the genocide here that, that took place here in Rwanda, where one million people over were killed. Well, I remember, if your memory serves you well too, the debate that went on at the UN it was like, you know, these developed rich countries, those who define values, simply took it like, 
These are just Africans killing each other. <laughs> These debates were in the open. But you think that is true? You think the divide that actually led to this genocide was just a creation of Rwandans? Not the people from the north who actually divided this country? Told people to think of themselves as belonging to one ethnic group and the other to think as belonging to one another ethnic group and therefore they should kill each other? Not only are they different, but they should kill each other? Would you believe that? Would you tell me that the two, 20 million people, this is documented by other people, not by me, who were killed in the Congo, were killed by other Congolese in the old days of King Leopold? And you think all that just disappeared in a moment, then you had the savages coming <laughs> over and taking over their own countries and killing each other? <laughs> By the way, all those past atrocities and all those uh, things that happened in the past, like the one he's giving an example in Congo during the King Leopold's uh, rules, uh, all those, and also during all the colonialism uh, and all that happened during that time all those uh, human rights uh, uh, all those human rights abuses that uh, happened it seems they have been forgotten uh, as he says it seems as if uh, those people in the west think that after they had left now that chapter is uh, it has been forgotten now it's uh, up to uh, up to us to uphold to a certain standard that they themselves did not hold up to. So it seems kind of a, uh, a weird kind of change of mind for the, how, how they want to perceive, to perceive Africa. Or, yeah, something like that. And then the others assume the higher ground, they are up there in the north and keep pointing fingers at those of us and think we have no values and we just uh, are there to, you know, we don't respect freedoms, we don't respect human rights, we, sure, do you think so? BBC, you think so? <laughs> you take time, you broadcast and from morning to evening, you, this is literally just abusing people. You're abusing Rwandans, you're abusing Africans, you Values, values, values. What values do you know, my dear sister? <laughs> on behalf of BBC. <laughs> now, this is another thing I like about Kagame is that uh, he's very specific and uh, if you ask him a question, he doesn't run away from it and he takes that chance to also personalize and uh, ask because uh, most people will just, uh, I noticed with uh, many of these uh, Western, uh, Western uh, media, when they are interviewing people from Africa or leaders from Africa, there's this thing of uh, asking questions as if they are sitting by the sidelines, as if uh, so that you cannot be able to attack them. They'll ask questions as if they are spectators, so that uh, you, they they watch you as you as you turn and turn and maybe put yourself in a corner or maybe <laughs> find yourself that you have a uh, you have a uh, Basically, they set up this trap where you cannot uh, victimize them. But what Kagame does is, uh, I have seen this on so many occasions, he turns the question uh, to you specifically, the person who asked, so that uh, you also have ownership in the outcome of uh, how the whole thing will be perceived. So, I want to assure you, there is nobody in the BBC or anywhere else they are about, who would be holding values better than we do here in Rwanda. So I, I just want to let you know that these issues of upholding values and so on, as far as I'm concerned, as I know, as far as one is concerned, we don't need any lessons from BBC or from anyone. I, I, I tell you this 
with firm conviction. So, democracy or people in prison you are talking about, there is nobody in Rwanda who is in prison that should not be there. <laughs> Actually, the, 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 this is a very good way of uh, putting your point across there. You don't beat uh, around the bush. Just you say it to the point. You get to the point and uh, you don't need that. Uh, because most uh, most uh, leaders from Africa, what they do is they shy away and they just uh, sugarcoat things. They don't want to to contradict themselves or put a point that will be frowned upon by these Western media sources. So uh, this is uh, also uh, very good that... Um, a very a good thing that I'm proud of about uh, Kagame. Because you have a justice system that is actually functional and is fair. Let me tell you something instead. Actually, there are people who are not in a prison <laughs> who should be there. <laughs> there are no people who are in a prison that shouldn't be there. But there are people who are not in a prison who actually should be there. <laughs> and I'll explain to you if you want. Anyway, this is just part of the of that um, that interview or that press conference. I, I watched the whole thing and it was it was very informing. You can get to know what uh, Kagame thinks uh, and the way he puts his points across is very admirable and uh, I wish more, we had more leaders like this in Africa and uh, I think this is why Kagame is uh, across, across uh, East Africa whenever he goes to Tanzania to, whenever he comes to Kenya there's this uh, he's upheld with a certain kind of uh, respect because uh, okay there are so many people who say he's a dictator i don't know this and that but i think for the most part uh, this guy has a certain there's uh, an element of uh, leadership and there's certain qualities he has that are to be admired but uh, anyway that, that, those are my opinions get down to the comment section let me know what you think about this. Uh, make your suggestions to other videos that you might want me to watch or react to. Uh, people from Rwanda, if you haven't subscribed, uh, subscribe so that you can watch more of my videos. Go to the comment section. Let me know what you think. What are Rwanda? Tunawapenda sana. Ingia hapo kwa comment section. Uniambie maoni yako. Mawazo yako kusu hii video. Na pia unieleze kusu kagame na rwanda in general so thank you very much uh, i'll see you next time i'm out <laughs>